everyone, it's Casey Wilson here from My Health, My Happiness. For today's Monday Motivator, I have Nat Kringudis. Do Dr. Nat Kringudis, sorry. Nat is a doctor of Chinese medicine, acupuncture and natural fertility educator. She focuses on female health in women's in her women's health and natural fertility clinic, the Pagoda Tree in Melbourne. And it doesn't stop there. Nat is so passionate about spreading the word on natural fertility. She's a regular presenter at Health Talks Around Australia. And I actually spoke alongside Nat for the Feed Your Soul event on the weekend in Adelaide. Um, Nat is also a producer and co-host of her own web series, Health Talks, and is author of her e-book, Fertilise Yourself, and co-author of Eat Fat, Be Thin. So I'm very excited for you chatting with Nat today. So welcome, Nat. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. All right. Well, what I firstly wanted to know is, have you always experienced true health and happiness, Nat? And I'm um, sure a little bit about your um, little journey that's led you to now. Totally. No, I haven't always. It was never, you know, in comparison to the patients that I see in my clinic, my health was never anywhere near as extreme as some of the cases that I see. But um, certainly I was one of those people that had extreme period pain and, you know, I went through all the issues with just growing up being a teenager and I guess I got to a point where I realised that there was a better way. And it wasn't necessarily when I was studying, it was actually after that time that I realised I need to come and fix my health. So, yeah, it was, you know, there was certainly a turning point for me and it was kind of like I had to walk my walk and talk my talk, otherwise I was a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, of course, yeah, then coming in and actually fixing up. And it's, the thing is it's never an end, there's not an end point. It's a, it's a constant day-to-day -day thing, maintaining health. So certainly, you know, every day we need to get up and, and do certain things and practice certain things that help us to get there. I guess the real turning point for me, and I talk about this in a lot of what I do, was when I did have some abnormal pap smears come back. And I, it was kind of like, oh, I guess it was a shock because, you know, I am a health practitioner, but at the same time it was also my body's signs and symptoms that were just communicating with me and it was a re it was a time that I really did have to be diligent about my diet and lifestyle more than ever before I had been through an extreme period of stress my son had been diagnosed with a genetic condition um, and I just had a baby so it was all at the time and yeah that would just definitely was a big wake-up call for me and you know I was put on the whole process of um treatment and cone biopsies and possibly let's burn away these cells and as it goes and I had this point of thinking hang on a minute um if I come in and I do all of that and say I go and remove these abnormal cells that are growing it doesn't actually change the reason why they're there in the first place so that was certainly something that I was um I went to my GP and I said I need time I need time to make this right, give me six months. And she said to me, no, nah, you can have three months and then come back and we'll retest. So we did all of that and it came back clear. And that was after three abnormal tests. So, yes, that was definitely a recent, you know, another one of those wake-up moments that it was time to do something about it. But it's constant, you know. We're all human. That's right. And that's really good you, you shared that because I do see that on a daily basis in clinic. And um, it can be really scary. And, um, yeah, just to know that you can actually get to the cause and change those um, those cells so yeah that's absolutely really and like I said you know if you go in and you remove evidence of illness mm -hmm. the, the actual core problem doesn't change that's so we right. need to be actually educating women that okay say you've gone and done that don't freak out there's heaps that you can do but you need to do it otherwise why would you you know do nothing nothing changes yeah well you certainly walk the walk now <laughs> um, so how do you personally contribute to the health and happiness of other women well I think there's two aspects to that, isn't there? There's the physical and there's the emotional. And to think that they're separate is ridiculous because they're one, they, they are very much intertwined. But I think once you start to open up the possibility and show women that there are other ways and solutions, it's a snowball effect. So, you know, we... Because, we, you know, <laughs> let's face it, a lot of who we deal with have been through horrendous whether it's, you know, horrendous journeys, whether it's IVF or recurrent miscarriage or polycystic ovarian syndrome or whatever it is, um, and they're at a point where they're kind of at their wit's end. So giving them a glimpse of what normal might be like and then allowing that to blossom over time when you're treating someone, I think that's every day we're doing that and it's so rewarding. I think also I'm at a time here in the clinic where we can't keep up. Like we're getting amazing 
results, but it's also because people are actually at a time where they want to take charge of their health. And so education is the key with all of that because it's all good and well for me to stand up here and tell everyone what I think they should do, but you need to make informed decisions. So we're, we're encouraging women and men to collect all the information that they can and then make an informed decision and an educated choice based on what feels right for them. That's right. That's mm. awesome. Okay, so what do you believe to be the most important, your top of the list, to really nourish the body for optimal, specifically hormone health and fertility? Yeah, at the top, very top of my list is stress. We've got to learn to manage stress. And it's such a hard one because it's not like you can just sort of say to people, chill out, it's going to be fun. It doesn't work like that. That's more stressful hearing that than, you know, and a lot of people don't know how to manage stress. So, you know, this is why I love acupuncture because it helps the body to cope better with stress. We can't always remove it, let's be realistic. It's the, you know, some people are also wired to be more stressed than others. So it is helping women and men to understand that that's, that's key. So whether it means, you know, being mindful of, if I'm going to be five minutes late, does it really matter? No, it's not going to change the world. Do you know what I mean? Like, or as opposed to things that are worth worrying about. And it's just a mindful choice. I believe as we start to get awareness around this, everything changes. Um, but also helping women to understand, and men, why that's a big deal and it really does push out our hormones out of, out of whack because the stress hormone and what's released mainly cortisol and progesterone, which is needed for ovulation, compete for the same receptor sites in our body and cortisol will always win, which means progesterone never gets to kick in, which means it upsets our hormone balance. So helping people understand why also is really important because then they can go, oh, I get it now, whereas if I just say, well, it upsets your hormone balance, I'll be like, and... <laughs> You know, we need to help people understand. So that's at the top of my list. But also diet and lifestyle because I can't and you can't influence necessarily what someone puts in their mouth. That's their decision at the end of the day. So, again, coming back to what you need to do in your home, own home to better your life and move away from relying on other people to tell you what to do. I think so, you know, when I talk about that, I talk about fats and protein and why they're so important and they're the building blocks of hormones again. So they're probably the top three things, stress, fats and hormones, stress, fats and protein, uh, you know, three things. And then there's lots of other little bits and pieces that fit in underneath that, you know, sunshine and quality water and body products, all those things come into play too. Exactly. And, um, yeah, just to reiterate, just those little changes on a daily basis, like don't try to do it all at once, but... Yeah, the little changes make a difference long term. So, yeah, thanks for that. And what do you particularly um, do on a daily basis? Is there anything that you do day in, day out with food, drinks or regimes that really help your health and happiness? Yeah, it's very really interesting because I watch a lot of people and I guess it depends on what sort of person you are. But there's a lot of hype around the morning, morning routines. I find that I see a lot of that amongst, um, you know, lots of people that advocate for wellness, which can be great for some people. But I'm a mum of two. <laughs> it's never going to work. Yeah. My kids wake up before I do very often, unless I want to get up at four o'clock in the morning, which is kind of not my choice. So um, I do have things that I do in the morning that are as small, you know, um, things like lemon water or apple cider vinegar before I start a breakfast that's full of protein and fat. Um, I like to do things in reverse and do things at the end of the day. So if I'm going to have some quiet time, whether that's meditating or writing or whatever that might be, I'll do it at the end of my day when everyone's asleep so it's kind of my time. Um, I realise how important it is to move as well, so to move my body. So, you know, I get out and I walk to most places because we're living somewhere now that we have and we can. But also, you know, I play netball, so I, I, I really, my body needs that high intensity every now and again to just move that stress out, and I find it really, really effective. But, you know, most of all, food is medicine, so I always come back to that, and you know, everything that I prepare and everything I eat, I kind of look at and think, how's this going to serve me? I was pretty public. We just came back from Hawaii, and I just struggled so much with the food, and everyone was like, oh, get over it. But, I can't eat it if it's not going to serve me. So I, I very often, not very often, but in those sorts of situations, I'll, I'll have to go it out because I'd rather not suffer the consequences. And typically my body's quite um, reactive often to that too. So, yeah, it is being mindful and they're, they're the sorts of things that I'll try and practice um, in a normal day. Awesome. And do you supplement? Do you find that there's anything that you're missing out on in the diet? From time to time, I might supplement. I generally go by my body. So
signs, symptoms. Yeah. Um, you know, sore, tired muscles, period cramps, maybe I need some magnesium or try and just tune in with what's going on. Um, like I said, I do try and, and get a broad range from my diet, but I do appreciate that we can't get everything always. And I was a, a massive fan of, of multivitamins, but in the clinic, we have to put everybody on a moment because we're just getting the nutrients from our food. So I guess if I say, you know, my favourite supplements, um, probiotics without doubt um, is something that we try, and if not, then I will supplement um, vitamin D, sorts of things if I feel like I'm able to get enough sun in. Um, but, yeah, I try and get most things by the diet and my body guide me if I do. I guess I have that luxury too as a practitioner. You can kind of zone in on what might be missing. But at the same time, it is sometimes difficult to be objective in your own life too. So it's a bit of a, a tricky one. But, yeah, on a day-to-day, that's sort of what we try and live by. Okay. And what about tests? Do you have anything specific that you um, do as a plan for yourself with testing, like hormones or vitamins? Yeah, I I find testing in the clinic to be quite great. I don't find it to always be. It's, it's, I say to patients, it's a small snapshot of a window of time in your life. I think they could be good as a guide if you like to maybe pair results after you know, treating somebody. Um, but, I, I, you know, for example, people will come in and show all the symptoms of low thyroid function, but their blood tests are fine. And it's like, well, I keep all the signs and symptoms. They are what speak to me right now and it, Chinese medicine is very much like that too so um for myself not really I guess I'd be silly to say if I didn't follow pap smears and things like that those sorts of tests as a routine but um unless I really felt the need I, which generally my health at least is generally okay I don't do that as a regular if anyone I had people so I find much so you know I'll encourage to do that but as it stands at the moment. We do test my son because he has cystic fibrosis, so it's really important watching what's happening with him. But again, I'm still led by signs and symptoms over the, the actual infinite result of a test. Yeah, that's what the body's telling you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And do you have a tip or any, any kind of um, advice for those that are just starting out in their health journey and really confused at a start? Yeah. yeah. Simple. <laughs> it's something that you, it's like building life. I mean, we can go hard and fast and things and, and crash and burn. And so I think just adding simple things to your regime, you know, like start with maybe lemon water in the morning and moving your foods to organic to begin with. And then, you know, we might add another layer to that and start to understand the nutritional benefits of specific things over a period of time and adding layers again, you know, meditating or exercise or whatever that might be. We're all different. And a lot of these things are learned practices. I think something especially like meditation can be overwhelming for a lot of people. So I like to sort of get people to start with snippets, you know, two-minute sort of mini meditations or um, two-minute practices that help to just help them to be aware and conscious and those sorts of things. But keep it simple and just slowly add to your library. Great. And who do you look for for healthy inspiration? Oh, <laughs> Um, whatever's going at the time, I'll always sort of adapt bits and pieces and it's not necessarily people in the wellness industry either. You know, I like to look at business women, for example, that are really cutting edge. I know it sounds a bit silly, but people like Rachel Zoe, I find her such an inspiration in terms of what she's created. I know it's a bit superficial in a way, but at the same time, she's created this brand. So I look at people like that for inspiration as well as, you know, general foodies and what people are putting out there, people like Sam Gowling, love watching people's Instagram accounts that have got this amazing food that you kind of go, oh, yeah, that's really cool. And then I've just finished a weekend last weekend at um, FedEx and that was like, it was a lot of contrasting, conflicting health ideas. So coming back to natural whole foods is, is really important as well. Well, we're about to go on tour, which is really exciting. So um, we, um, last year, by default, we created debunking ovulation. That became an event and then it became a download, so it's now a mini e-course, and which paved the way for the next one, which is debunking polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, really, at the end of the day, we're just reaching out 
to people who want to understand their hormones better. So when I say PCOS is, you know, one diagnosis of a certain type of hormone imbalance. So we're looking really at hormone balance in, imbalance in general. Um, but we kick off um, the tour as of the 4th or the 5th, the 5th of April. Um, so we've just had Melbourne's event and then off we go. And then that will become an e-course as well and it will be much more visually appealing than the experiment that was debunking circulation. <laughs> so we've got that and then... Um, just out, my, my next book will hopefully be out um, oh, within the next six to 12 months. It takes such a long time. And that's a printed book, isn't it? No. Yes, it is. So that's Fertilise Yourself, which is currently my e-book, um, is going to print. So it's still available as an e-book and it will be for a small amount of time and then it will actually come off and become a printed book, which is really exciting. That is awesome. Well done. And um, you can head over to Nat Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You too. See you.